So this is again about bandits. Um, we look at the, the classical or the, the most basic bandit settings, stochastic bandits and adversarial bandits. And the question we are asking is, um, if the bandit problem is actually stochastic, we want to take advantage of the, of the strong regret bounds we, which we have for stochastic bandits. But if it turns out to be not stochastic, we, won't we don't want to suffer too much by believing that it's stochastic. So we want to detect easy, uh, early that it's not stochastic and suffer not much more regret than we would have suffered if we would have used an algorithm for the adversarial bandit setting from the beginning. So this is work with Chok Hai Chiang, who is now at UCLA. And yeah, I'm not explaining bandits to you again. Um, <laughs> Just the setting, so we have payoffs, which you can think of 0, 1, and we're interested in the regrets. So that is how much does the algorithm lose in payoffs compared to the optimal arm. In the adversarial setting, the payoffs are arbitrary generated by an adversary. What is important in the talk is that we will distinguish between between oblivious adversaries and adaptive adversaries. In, an oblivious adversary needs to fix all the payoffs in advance, whereas the adaptive adversary uh, might choose the payoffs depending on the player's previous choices. We have um, strong regret bounds for the setting, um, and I'm mostly interested in the uh, order of the number of plays we have. So for the adversarial setting, we have square root n roughly as the regret bound. In the stochastic setting, we have uh, independent payoffs. For each arm, we have a mean. And, oops, yeah. and instead of looking directly at the regret, we look at the pseudo regret because the regret or the expected regret typically scales like square root n. And to get more interesting bounds, we look at the pseudo regret, which also seems more fair because if even if the arms are all equal, then the expectation of the max uh, is a square root n larger than the actual mean. So comparing the average regret of uh, the average reward or average payoff of the algorithm with the average payoff of the optimal arm is the fair thing to do. And for this uh, pseudo reward through the regret, we have the strong bounds, which are logarithmic in the number of trials. So these are the, the two settings we are comparing. And what we want is that um, if the setting is actually stochastic, we want this log n uh, regret. And if it's not stochastic, we want at most a square root n regret. There's previous work on this by Bubek and Slivkins. Uh, and they showed an algorithm. The Sauer algorithm, stochastic and adversarial optimal. And they show that their algorithm suffers log n squared regret in the stochastic setting and squared n regret in the adversarial setting. The question is, is the square necessary here or can we do better? And we give a twofold answer to this. One answer is, yeah, yes, it is necessary. And the second answer is, we can improve on that. Which in some sense. Um, so the first part of the answer is, if we have an algorithm which has a smaller regret, so log n to the beta and beta smaller than 2, then there are bended problems such that the algorithm suffers n to, so almost linear regret with probability n to the minus epsilon. So we don't get high probability bounds which is square root n. And if the adversary is allowed to be adaptive, we can also show that the expected regret is almost linear. So which means that the square is actually necessary to get high probability bounds or to get bounds on the expected uh, regret for adaptive adversaries. On the other hand, we show that, um, so we have an algorithm which has logarithmic regret for stochastic bandits, which has for oblivious bandits the square root n regret, and 
for adaptive adversaries, we can bound the pseudo regret, which is a little weaker than the expected regret for adversarial bandits. So if we make a table of this, then it's kind of interesting. One interesting thing is that, that we get a distinction of the uh, expected regret for adaptive adversaries and the oblivious adversaries, which is not so common. In most cases, uh, the regrets are the same. We also get a distinction between um, the high probability bounds and so this high probability bound also hold, holds for oblivious adversaries. So this is actually an upper bound, and this, uh, this is a lower bound, this is an upper bound. So, it's, so we have this upper bound for oblivious adversaries, which so that we cannot get a regret bound with high probability, but still we can bound the expected regret. <coughs> this seems a little strange, because we have like, we get this regret with probability, probability n to the minus epsilon, and still we get an expected regret which is squared n. The reason is that we also have negative regret on some parts of in time, and this makes this result possible. So I have maybe two minutes. Um, so I'm not going to show you the algorithm. I'm showing you the lower bound. Uh, which is here. So the idea for the lower bound is essentially that the adversary which wants to beat the algorithm slices up times into, into phases and the phases increase exponentially such that the one phase is, is quite a bit larger than all the previous phases together. Still we get logarithmically many phases. So if um, the algorithm is allowed to make only log beta n plays for the interesting arm, which seems inferior at the beginning, then in, there is one phase where we have only log beta minus one plays in one of these phases for the arm two. This allows, so, and now the algorithm needs, needs to distinguish if, he is some, if the arm is like this or if it's like this, but he has only that many plays which is less than log n, and this gives uh, a relatively large probability that the algorithm will be mistaken. So with this probability, the change is not detected, and the regret is like this. So this is very rough, the um, lower bound argument. Um, to sum up, so we have an algorithm which achieves optimal, nearly optimal pseudo-regret for stochastic and adversarial bandits, the lower bound shows that the log n squared is necessary to get high probability bounds. And this gives us a separation for oblivious adversaries and adaptive adversaries. The algorithm which I haven't shown is that it use, uses weak tests to detect changes of the arms. Since we have only log n trials for the bad arm in total, you need to be, the algorithm needs to be quite careful how to how to test for a change of the arm. So he, he re does repeated weak tests to detect such a change. The analysis explicitly accounts for negative regret. And where our algorithm starts with an algorithm for stochastic bandits and does additional checks to detect that, the, that the, L, the bandits are actually adversarial, there's an alternative approach to that to start with an algorithm for adversarial bandits like X3, a variant of that, and tweak the algorithm such that it also gives polylogarithmic regret for stochastic bandits, and this is work by Sullivan and Slifkind. That's it, thank you.